Hello, Paul Hamilton here. I'm gonna show you how to make some customized or custom uh, shapes for Keynote. Um, I created some shape fonts the other day and got a, lot of, um, got a lot of interest, so I thought I'd show you what we're actually gonna to do today. So I'm actually using Inkpad, which is like a vector program uh, for iPad, and I'm using an iPad Pro with a Apple Pencil. Um, I'm gonna select a new template here. This app costs about $6, but it's well worth, worth the investment. Um, so I'm going to press uh, A4, that'll do, and I'll just press Create. You can see it just comes in as a blank template, uh, really, really easy to use. So what I'm going to do is press a picture icon at the top, and I'm just going to bring in uh, a little image I have of Australia, because that's going to be what I'm actually creating today, is a little shape of Australia. And what I'm going to do here is on the left there, I'm going to resize it, so I'm going to transform it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to press on my kind of paintbrush tool here um, and just tap off it. Now down the bottom right hand corner there's a layers palette. You can see there that I've brought in uh, my first layer that I'm going to delete at the end. This is just a bit of a um, an image that I can actually trace around and I'm actually going to create a new layer. So you can see there that I'm on layer two. On layer one, just so that I can see it, I'm just going to bring my opacity down just so I can see the sketch that I'm actually doing there. I'll go back to layer two tap on and I'm ready to trace with my Apple Pencil on my iPad. So I'm just gonna go around really kind of roughly. I'm not actually going to be too accurate here and I'll have a little chat with you as I'm doing it. And what this is doing is kind of creating the outside of our shape. And if you're familiar with Keynote, when you make editable, um, you'll see all these little kind of anchor points that pop up. This is what this is doing here. It's doing a pretty good job. And this will also be my background that I can actually change if I wanted to change the background in Keynote where you can change at a border and thickness and style and so forth. So there, that's a pretty good job. You can see all the little anchor points that I've got popping up there, which is great. Um, and what I'll actually do here is I'll actually show you uh, a little bit later on actually in a different tutorial, I'll show you how to create some states for your country. But I might just add one more just to show you. So I'm gonna add another layer here. This is layer three. And I'm just gonna do Tasmania so we can show you how that's kind of a different shape if we wanted to. Um, so we've got the kind of two shapes there. Why don't I keep going? Because you guys are advanced. I'm gonna keep going here. Just say I wanted to do um, one of the states, for example. So what I can actually do here is I can move my first layer up a little bit. Now I can actually see that and I can do my kind of fourth layer. And why don't I do Queensland? We love Queensland, Queensland's the best. So I'm actually gonna quickly trace the kind of border for Queensland, just so that you can see it as a different layer. I don't need to be too accurate because what I actually wanna do is fill that with something that's kind of relevant and symbolic of Queensland, which I might do there. And when I get back, you can see there's created. So if I go back to my layers, I can see I've got my layers. And if I wanted to do some more details, I can. Each of these can be broken apart as different shapes. So that's really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna to go to my layer one and I'm actually gonna delete that. So now I've just got basically all of my different kind of elements that I've created. It's looking pretty good. I should have done my other states, but I'm gonna show you how to do that on a different tutorial. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share that. So I'm gonna export it, but this is the crucial part in Shapes in Keynote. I need to do it as an SVG file, so a vector, um, with kind of those anchor points um, and those parts uh, editable. So I'm gonna do export as an SVG and I'm actually gonna airdrop it to my Mac. This is the only time I need my Mac is to actually convert it to a Keynote file. So I'm actually gonna need to do that. So I'm gonna send it over, turn off this and I'll come back to you in a minute. So here is my airdropped file. You can see here I've accepted it. So I'll come over here and accept to downloads. And when I do that, um, it will pop up here. So I've accepted that and it will come up in my downloads. So if I go to my downloads now, it hasn't yet. So let's, why don't we just send that again and just see if that comes over. So here it comes over now. So I accept, save to downloads and you can see it's come across here as a drawing. So I'm gonna drag that over onto my desktop so I know where it is. And let's just rename that 
Australia. Now at the bottom of this video, you will see um, where I got the next application for my Mac. This is the only time I really need my Mac and it's an application called SVG to Keynote. You can see the icon there. If you do a Google search for it, you'll find it really quickly, but I'll also put the link at the bottom of this video. And so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm gonna open that, and it basically says select the SVG file that we've just created and sent over, so I'm gonna do that. And mine's called Australia, so I'm gonna double tap. And what happens there is you can see here, it's actually created an Australia Keynote. It's, it's um, transferred it over to a Keynote file. So I've dragged it onto my desktop there. Here it is here. Um, and basically uh, what I'm gonna do is airdrop that back so we can have a look back to my iPad. So I'll share that through airdrop. We love airdrop, best invention ever. I'm gonna send that back to uh, Paul's iPad and we'll pick up again. So we're back on my iPad and it's sent it back to me. There's my SVG kind of file. It says, do you want to open it in Keynote? It's now a Keynote file, obviously. The reason why we had to use our Mac and that software is that iOS does not handle um, vector files very well at all. So that's kind of the only time we need our Mac. And I'm actually going to open a copy. This is pretty important. So if I open copy here, you can see all of our beautiful shape. This is now a, a big shape. And if I wanted to do things like I do with shapes, if I go highlight my Australia, and if I uh, color my Australia in there, you can see that my individual elements, uh, Queensland, uh, why don't we fill it with something a little bit more appropriate in regard to uh, color for Queensland, a little bit more of a maroon color. Uh, have I got like a maroon? Oh, that's pretty close. Let's go with that kind of color. That's pretty good for Queensland. And I've now got my shapes or my elements there that I can do all my different things with. So once again, uh, Queensland, uh, we can fill it with actually an image this time. Let's see if I've got an image on my camera roll that I could actually use, not the pinks and so forth. Uh, let's go down. Hopefully we've got an image here. got hazel. Uh, what don't like an Aboriginal type feel. Look at that. Doesn't that look absolutely wonderful? My Australia, I could get my students to actually fill it with another image here. Let's try something different. Uh, what about just a shot that I took of Matthew Flinders? Uh, let's scale to fill there. Look at that. So we can really start to play around with shapes and how great it looks. Um, I hope you found this really useful. I'll do some more advanced ones about fonts and different things there, but this is how we can create customized shapes for Keynote using the Inkpad app here. So there's my Inkpad app. Um, it does cost five or six dollars, but well worth. Uh, we can do it with Adobe Draw as well and some Adobe Suites. And if you've got a Mac, you can do it on a Mac as well. But I'm finding Inkpad really, really great because I can actually customize it, uh, fill it, and be a little bit more accurate with my Apple Pencil. Paul Hamilton here, signing off.